Hello, I'm Dan. Nice to meet you. Um, it's been just a bit over a month now since I posted um, a video about my 8-bit breadboard computer. Uh, one year of bending wire, an unfinished breadboard computer. Um, and that video has been pretty well received. Um, it's had over a thousand views now. Uh, probably about, what was it, pushing 30 odd likes. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased uh, with, with the reception that's had. Um, so much so that I thought I would make a couple more videos. Um, so this one's just going to be a bit of an introduction because uh, the last video was just very, very quick, shaky cam type. Uh, so the project is the plum. Why is it plum? Well, computers need to be named after fruit. Plum is a funny word. Plum, I don't believe, has been taken for a computer project yet. And uh, certainly if you're British, plums can refer to a uh, rude body part. So um, I'm so mature. Um, so I would just like to thank my new subscribers. Um, I hope that I can <laughs> hold your interest. Uh, with these videos and please um, you know if you want to know anything do leave a, a comment um, all feedback is valuable um, this is still very much new territory for me um, so yeah we'll see how it goes um, this is all relatively unscripted I've got a few bullet points of things that I want to mention um, and that's about it so yes um, I'm Dan I am a, a web software engineer uh, working in central London and um, electronics is very much just a hobby for me um, and it always has been uh, since I was very young um, I've always had a, a little box of bits and bobs and trying to put circuits together and figuring it out the hard way and um, I've been electrocuted once or twice uh, certainly not not on on DC but uh, even as a kid I was uh, playing with mains so Electricity and fire, <laughs> definitely the two safest hobbies. Um, so uh, yeah, that's me. Um, and the plum is uh, simply a project that I decided to embark on um, to have something to, to fill the time with, really. Um, I'm up in London during the weeks and uh, it, it can get a little bit lonely sometimes. Um, Get, or got a little bit depressed so this was a project just to kind of keep my mind off things um, and it's done really well and I have definitely learnt a number of things through it um, a couple of electronics things not so much relating to uh, computing and processor design because as I say it's, it's my field so I'm, I'm vaguely aware of how these things work um, but also just uh, it's, it's taught me a couple of things about myself which is is good um, and it's been an exercise in patience as well um, so uh, on the whole I'll say it's a, a very good idea and uh, I'm increasingly of the opinion that all software developers should have a project like this or something like this on the go as um, what I call a, a lightning rod for obsession um, because we tend to be the slightly more obsessive type and uh, yeah, it's it's good to have something to sink your your obsession into. Um, so that's what this is. Um, I thought I'd answer a few questions that I've received about it. Um, so I'll start with the the two questions that were asked on YouTube uh, through the comments. Um, I believe the first one was uh, how do I decide which chips to use, which is a hell of a question. <laughs> um, and it's not a, an easy one to answer. Um, but for me, for the most part, I literally, I use the uh, Wikipedia list of 74 series uh, logic chips. And just to see what's available, cross-reference that with what I can get at uh, Farnell or um, eBay. I have no you know, connection with, with Farnell or eBay. Uh, it's just where I happen to get my stuff. Um, and just generally see what's available and what I can do. And then there's watching other people's YouTube videos and blogs. Um, so a few uh, really useful resources have been um, 
obviously Ben Eater's very good videos. Um, though I, I wish he had <laughs> started his series that he's been doing now a lot sooner. Because um, I remember when I first started mine, uh, freeze framing his uh, original sort of stepping through pr uh, video in his Fibonacci program uh, videos to try and zoom in and see what the, the, the numbers on the chips were. Try and figure out what was going on. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, I, I perhaps could have done with that at the time, but I've not done too badly. Um, so, it's, it's, it's alright. Um, other sources that have been very useful to me um, are, oh, books. So, uh, this same book, um, the same one that Ben has, uh, though my edition is slightly different. Um, but if you're at all interested in this kind of stuff, try to find a copy of this book. It's pretty good. Um, or just watch Ben's videos. <laughs> um, uh, and all sorts of resources relating to um, 6502 programming. Um, and the machines around that, and uh, Z80s. Not that I, I don't have any Z80 books on me. Um, I historically have always played with 6502s from BBC Micros. Um, so uh, that's all we, that's all kind of fed into it, really. Um, there's no one hard and fast uh, list of what you should use where. Um, though it might make an interesting series of videos so I'm thinking that I might do that I might um, basically go through each chip that I've used and explain what they do and why why it's useful um, but I'm not doing that just yet uh, another question that I received through YouTube uh, and this is a question that I very much enjoyed and did rather tickle me um, is why is my RAM section so large um, this amused me because it's only 16 bytes, um, but physically it is very large, yes. Um, and the reason for that is because um, I was not able to find any of the 74 series SRAM chips uh, to buy and to use in, in the plum. So I was left with, well, I'm going to have to make some RAM of my own. Uh, so I just used, I um, can't remember what the, the number of the chip is off the top of my head, again I'll come back to it. Uh, but they are, they are uh, octal D-type flip-flop type chips. Um, so they each chip stores a single byte, and then I'm using a pair of uh, 138 uh, three 3-bit uh, three 8-line decoders. Uh, in order to decode the 4-bit memory address and select the appropriate octal register to output or to combine with the clock signal and um, write into. So that's why that is, that's why that's, that's quite large. Um, I have since been pointed in the direction of where I can find some of those chips, um, so thank you. Um, however, there's a slight snag is that the chips that I have been pointed in the direction of are 74LS chips and I have built the plum out of 74HC chips. Um, now I do know there's a little bit of incompatibility between the, the different series of chip, of 74 series chips. Um, I don't think it would be, you know, it wouldn't be an insurmountable problem, um, but just a little bit fiddly and I've already built that 16 byte array. so. Um, probably not really worth the effort of changing it around just to use these these other chips. Um, if I find them in the HC variety I will definitely uh, order a pile of them and I'll probably make another RAM module of a, a similar physical size but of a, a much bigger um, uh, storage capacity. So we'll see if I find those. Alternatively I do also have a bunch of um, Cypress SRAM chips that I can use. Um, I haven't used them yet, um, but they are available to me. Uh, so the, those might make an appearance later. Um, another question that I received, though offline, was uh, did it really take me a year to do that? Um, 
and no, no, it didn't. Um, it, as I say, it's it, it's a side project. It's something I've been doing in the evenings, and for six months of that year, I was not working. I was I was out of work, uh, so I was away and not working on the plum. So really, it's six months of evenings. Um, but that doesn't have quite as nice a ring to it as one year of bending wire. Six months of evenings of bending wire. Nah, not really. Um, the other thing to note is that uh, in that year I have actually built, uh, I think this is the third iteration of, of this machine. I've never actually got any further in terms of having a complete working system but everything you see, you see there, I have rebuilt at least, I've built twice. Um, so, uh, except the registers, which I've built three times. Um, and re the reason for that is, uh, for the first time, it was a change of architecture. So I was originally going to build a SAP1 based architecture uh, uh, computer like Ben Eaters, and as is documented in this book. Um, but then I, I, I just kind of went off the beaten track a bit and decided to do my own thing. Um, so I rebuilt that. And then as I was rebuilding all that, as time went by, uh, I got much more practiced at building them, building these, these breadboards. So all the wires were wonderfully straight with nice... 90 degree and 45 degree angles and jumping over each other really tidily and it was starting to look really really neat and tidy um, but the older sections weren't nearly as tidy and uh, this just kind of bugged me so I um, decided to rebuild most of it um, in order to shift the chips over by one in order to, to fit an LED in or um, just to change the colour of the wires that I've been using so I had one color scheme for different wires when I started and then I tweaked this and I changed that and these two colors were complementary and those two colors were complementary and it made more sense to group them like this so I ended up redoing a lot of the wiring just to change the color of the wire um, so th this is what I mean by it's been a lightning rod for obsession um, in in a work situation I would not be looking to do that, to, to change everything around just because I want it to look different or to look prettier or tidier. Um, it's, it's not really suitable for a work setting, but I can scratch that itch here with this project. Um, so yeah, uh, those were the three main questions. Um, and uh, I think I will not go on too much longer on this video because I, I want to keep them relatively short and not to wear out your patience and just have me sat here rambling into a, into a uh, webcam. Um, I think our next video I do might be um, an overview of what already exists and how it's broken up into the different sections and what those sections are and what they do. Um, then I might do a video showing off the latest addition to the plum, uh, which is essentially a serial monitor. And I don't mean monitor in the sense of a, a, a screen, like a VGA monitor, a DVI monitor or whatever. I mean a monitor um, in the old 8-bit sense of um, allowing you to interactively with the computer uh, inspect memory and tweak things and change things and control the hardware through the hardware without having to rely on uh, lots of switches and dials which are wired directly into it. Um, so that's that's a thing that exists and is coming along very nicely and I'm quite pleased with it and it's finally given me a use for my Arduino Mega because I need a few pins for that. So I will draw a line under this video now and um, I hope you have a, a pleasant day, pleasant evening, uh, good night and uh, I will see you in the next video. So thank you for watching. Uh,
please 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 comment like subscribe if you wish um, any and all shares would would be great at getting a little bit more traffic to the videos um, because it is a learning exercise and I am hoping to get a little bit of feedback into the project and maybe learn something new um, I'm not sitting here I, I don't want to sit here and try to, to, to teach I, I simply want to show you what I've done and how I've done it and why I've done it and uh, hopefully get some feedback on that and uh, and be able to improve it so have a good one ta -ra.